xmatch is the updated version of the match function for Excel 365 users. So if you're already familiar with the match function, maybe you've used it in conjunction with index, then you're going to find xmatch a breeze. Because whilst xmatch is an updated version of the match function, it's also very similar to xlookup. And both xlookup and xmatch were released at the same time and contain similar options. So let's take a look at match first, and then we'll take a look at xmatch. Now we're using the same spreadsheet here. This is our apps sales data. And I've already put it into a table and I've called that table apps. And I've already created the data validation dropdown list and we have Doom selected. Now, if I was to type in match into here, notice the arguments that we get. Lookup value, lookup array, and then the optional argument of match type. So let's say that our lookup value is Doom, comma, our lookup array, where are we going to find this lookup value? Well, we're going to find it in the apps column. And we want to do an exact match of the word doom in the table. So we're going to select zero just there, close it off, hit enter. Now, what does it return here? It returns a number three. Because what the match function does is it finds the row number of the app. And when we say row number, we mean the row number of our data set, not the actual row number of the worksheet. So you can see here that in this table, row number three is the entry for Doom. Now, most of the time, you don't want it to return the row number. You actually want it to show the category. And that is where we have to combine it with index in order to get the result that we want. So match will generate the row number. And all we need to do is wrap it in an index and select the array. Now the array is the column that we want to return. In this case, the category. So our array is the category column, comma, you can see the next argument of index is row number. And that is where we have our match function. That's gonna generate the row number for us. We can then simply click at the end, close off index, hit enter, and it returns the actual category as opposed to the number three. So that is how the match function works along with index to give us a really nice way of looking up information. Now, with that said, let's take a look at xmatch. So we're gonna type in equals xmatch. Now, xmatch is different to match in that we have a few more arguments, and these look more reminiscent of the xlookup formula. So we have lookup value, that's gonna be doom. Lookup array, where are we going to find that lookup value? We're going to find it in the apps column, comma. We're now into add two optional arguments. So with xmatch, we can define the match mode, whether we're doing an exact match or a partial match. Now I want to do a full match here. So we're going to do a zero, comma, and then we get to determine which way we're searching through our data set. Again, you don't have these options when you're just using match. So I'm going to say first to last, close off X match, hit enter, and it's going to give me the same result. It's going to give me three. Now, of course, even though I've used X match, I could wrap this in an index. So let's double click. And all I would need to do here is type in index. What do we want to return? What's our array? Well, the category is what we want to return. So that's our array, comma. The row number argument is going to be generated by the X match formula. Close off index at the end there, hit enter, and we get the result. So we can combine xmatch, which is a newer dynamic array function, with one of the older functions, index, to get our result. So it's worth thinking about using xmatch as opposed to match if you prefer to use the index match combination for lookups. If you're not a subscriber, click down below to subscribe so you get notified about similar videos we upload. To see the full course that this video came from, click over there. And click over there to see more videos from Simon Says It.